real African stories and real African experiences. This is a Legally Clueless video series. And in this episode, Marcus shares how photography reminded him of who he is. So, um, this, this photography thing of mine that I love so much. Um, so it's been, an, it's been an on and off. You know those love stories where the person, uh, the people met each other in high school and then they were just friends initially. Maybe they thought that would be a thing, then there wouldn't be. And then later on in life, like they went through their first and second loves and marriages and got divorced. And then later, got fed. that's me in photography. Um, because it started around 2012. Technically, I've been doing this for eight years. Technically, if we were to do a strict timeline, uh, I first picked a, up a camera at that point a DSLR, but uh, in reality, it's been more akin to three years, there about. Um, 20 was the first time I picked up a camera. At that point in time, uh, it was my girlfriend then that had the camera. Um, so she handed it over to me and I took a couple of shots of random objects in the house. I was like, hmm, why am I so happy? What is going on? What is this joy in my heart? Um, so picked it up for about a year, then at that point, that was 2012, then 2013, um, a little voice, so in my head, there's a committee of voices, uh, there's very many, there's, there's, there's the rational one, there's the impulsive one, there is um, the arbiter between the two that brings them together, and you're like, hey, 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 guys, here, 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 there's the one who is able to see things and detect patterns and see where things are going and you know there's all these different so at that point in time um my uh, let me call that voice the the forward thinking voice hadn't properly developed yet um so because of the realities of life i.e rent needs to be paid uh <laughs> i decided to find a formal job and that was the end of that part one of the love story at that particular point. Uh, would I do it that way again? I'm not entirely sure because the jobs I got in between, except for one, there's one job I don't regret in between. The other two, who? These are Lord. However, after two abusive relationships, <laughs> This, imagine this is the thing that I'm running with this analogy I'm running with all the way. So after two abusive relationships, um, I got back to the point of meeting this first love of mine. Well, second love, because first love is writing and then photography. I go back to this second love of mine and rediscover it. I'm like, oh, hi. It's been so long. How are you? Have you been? Hiya, you've, wow, that's been a long, that's a long time. So much has happened. We need to catch up for coffee sometime. Maybe I'll come and uh, we'll, we'll see, come with the kids, da, da, da. Those, 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 those type of things. And this time around, because of the experiences that I had in between, I had no doubts. Because at that point, it was a point of, yeah, I remember why I loved this thing in the first place. I remember the joy, the spark, the things that it did to my mind. This is the thing I love about photography. My mind is otherwise very busy. And I'm not a huge fan of that. It helps in terms of thinking things through and seeing very many different perspectives at the same time. Because I'm able to, and that's what helped with my strategy part of my career because I'm very able to very quickly see very many bits of information, put them together, see what's more like, what's more uh, viable and that way that made me good at my job in terms of strategy. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it gets exhausting as hell because that's every single moment and every single decision. Every decision is, do I want tea, do I want coffee? But tea has this and coffee has this. I would do well with tea here. However, because of the day ahead, I need coffee for this. But if I have coffee in the morning, that means I need to have it in the afternoon as well so that I don't dip. But when I dip and I have coffee then, then that means at night I won't sleep well, which means I'm back to coffee. That, that's, that's every single moment for every decision. My workaround for that now has become... What's the first thing you're thinking about? Okay, we're going. We're committing to that path and we're going. We're not overthinking it. However, what I have 
one of the other benefits I've come to love about photography is the only moment that matters is that one. So it's allowed me to keep everything else quiet and focus on this one thing. What am I looking at through my lens? And being able now to use that process to anticipate what's about to happen. So the same things that make my head noisy are now working to make my craft better and more candid and more real. And so I went full time into photography. Then a panda shuka happened. Yeah. Because what's life without a good adventure? And a good adventure involves, whee, you fall down. Uh, I actually remember it quite clearly. Um, March 13th, 2020. That was when the first press conference happened to confirm the first case. And as soon as that press conference ended, um, I had two gigs lined up. These two gigs were supposed to pay for loans that I had acquired to upgrade my gear. As soon as that press conference happened, I see my phone ringing. It's like, fuck, it's happening. So call number one. Yeah, so with this thing, you know, travel advisories, da 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 da, we would have to postpone. Um, and at that point, it's yeah, that I completely understand. Yes, in my head, I know. Given how it's happened elsewhere in the world, postpone means this is not going to fucking happen this year. So there goes that entire stream. Then the second one comes. Yeah, we'd need to cancel because the person who's coming into the country is no longer coming in because of all these things. So that, it didn't shatter, but it created a strain on this new-ish relationship and new-ish love. Yes, it is uh, at that point year two of being fully committed to photography, but... It's still, I mean, by any stretch, two years is still very young love. Um, and, and that was, I remember the first couple of weeks and first couple of months, now that I have the benefit of hindsight, I think I was just trying to stay afloat mentally um, because one of the things that I have in my head is, and I, I love my parents, they're the most accommodating human beings on the planet, they're the most loving human beings on the planet. Um, and if worse gets to worst, I know they would not be, you know, there are those parents that shame you for having to go back home and da, 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 da. They're, they're not that type at all. If anything, one of the initial things were, if you feel things are getting tough, a home is always open to you. And I appreciate that for them so much. But at the same time, I have this thing in my head, and I don't know what voice this is, but it's a thing of, no, I can't, I can't go back home. And I know it's irrational on some level, but it's just a hard rule in my head because I already left. So coming back, am I, is, does that mean I'm failing? Am I a failure? Am I, so there are very many irrational thoughts tied to it. And I'm very aware, but it's just a hard rule in my head. Like, does, mm, mm -mm, that's not an option. Um, I can find a bed sitter or something. Like, let me tell you, this entire period and a couple of incidents before allowed me to distill what is essential. So when I say I can find a bed sitter, I can find a single room that only allows for a mattress because... I realized that the only things I need in that house are my gear. Because with that, I'm able to rebuild. Everything else is disposable. Every single thing can go away. It's fine. I don't care. My gear though, no. But that, back to the main line, um, that period uh, was a period in which I realized later on that I was simply trying to keep afloat and cope with the changes that were happening. 
precisely because, and this is a recent revelation, and by recent I mean in the last four to six weeks, it's always been there, I just hadn't properly recognized it for what it is. Um, change is a very difficult thing for me. Very difficult. When my mind is set one way on a path, even for a day, like when I know my day looks like this or my month looks like this, a sudden change that I didn't project will be very disorienting and very, it will be a, what is happening, why is it happening, what's going on, um, which I've learned to work out. Um, and because of this drastic life shift, because all of a sudden, I'm moving from an estimated this amount of income and this amount of gigs in a month to absolutely zero. I'm moving from a place, a two bedroom place in which a second bedroom was to become a studio to the reality that I can't afford the rent and therefore I need to find a different space. Um, that means that studio plan goes away. Um, to the reality as well of simply having no one booking gigs for a straight, I think it was almost six months. That change did not break me, but it stretched me in very uncomfortable ways. But what I again give credit to is the fact that because my parents are who they are and who they have been to me they give me a very firm foundation um, and it's not a firm foundation of telling you you are this you are this but a firm foundation of being able to understand and process what is happening and go back and remind myself of what is real and what is not what is real circumstances have changed what is not real you are a failure what is real you still have your skill what is not real your skill is useless what is real this period may last a while but what is also real is I have an ability to evolve and I have an ability to learn and figure out what may work best. And because they fostered that foundation, that's the only reason why I didn't break, but instead I stretched. Because at that point in time, because of so much free time, so to speak, I then at that point moved from a space of let's do things for the sake of doing things because there's this shoot, so we need to clear this shoot and move to the next shoot and then move to the next shoot and move to the next shoot. And instead of that, returned to learning the principles of this thing because at the end of the day, regardless of how good you are at a thing, if you're not constantly interrogating the fundamentals and the basics of how you started and revisiting all of that and reminding yourself of all of that, uh, then you're just, I, I call it the Mueshimiwa syndrome. You're, you're just another Mueshimiwa who is just out to thump your own chest and, and tell yourself, I am an amazing human being, yay! And these are all my accomplishments. But do you still have the mind and frame of mind to keep remembering why you're doing the things you're doing, to remember who you are. And that's what this last year has allowed me to do. Financially, it's been a shit show, fuck. It's been, I keep getting messages every day because there are certain um, people, uh, not people, institutions, uh, from whom when times are better, I borrowed money because I could pay it back at the time. And then 
Pararira happened and then there's no money. So I don't have money to pay. So you keep threatening. We will list you on C- at CRB. Fine. It's not there. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm not G- I'm a disciple of Jesus, but I am not Jesus. I hope one day to be like him, but I'm also very aware that I am not like him. I am a very vile human. It's you want to list me on, on CRB? It's okay. List me on CRB. It's fine. I'm not taking a loan anytime soon. I can't afford it. I can't. Not now. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, that was a tangent. <laughs> Financially, it was a shit show. But in terms of what it's allowed me for my personal growth, it's been phenomenal. It's been absolutely phenomenal. I I feel like a lot of times we get lost in the idea of growth being a linear path. And by linear path, I don't just mean it being point A to point B, a straight line, but that it is point A to point B. Sometimes growth is getting to a certain point and coming back to the beginning and asking, why am I doing this? Why do I do the things that I do? And why do I do the things that I do the way that I do them? And reminding myself of that is a thing that has been very freeing and liberating and yet affirming at the same time that allows me to again quiet those other voices you know the many the council of voices some of which are uh, not entirely welcome but they're part of the council so it's fine um reminding myself who i am is a powerful thing reminding yourself who you are is such an incredible thing i remember at some point in November, what is time? I remember at some point last year, <laughs> um, uh, someone approached me. Uh, they were looking for a host for a radio show. That was at that point, they were looking to revamp their station and revamp their image. Um, and I have a very deep love for radio. It's one of the things that I, because again, same in my mind, same as photography, thing about radio is the thing that matters is that moment at that time. The thing that you're saying at that time is what is real and that's what reality is. Um, So they were looking for a show um, and I was amongst the names, so we had that conversation. um, And so I said to them at that point in time, I need time to think about it. Which is another thing that I've learned how to do, to say, give me a moment, I need to think because I'm not going to make a decision out of the highness of an emotion or I'm not. Um, So I go back, interrogate myself and I ask myself, okay, yes, uh, you love radio. That's a given. But where are you on your path now? Would radio serve the interest that you're building towards? Because I have a vision that I am building towards. Does that serve an interest that you're building towards now? Or would you be taking the job for the paycheck? Which would be a good paycheck. I'd be very happy with that paycheck. It would help me be in good terms with CRB and my other people. It would be wonderful. But at what cost? Because at this point in time, it's not just about taking a thing for the sake of taking a thing, but what am I sacrificing to take the thing? That means, because of radio prep and what it is, we can lie to each other and say, yeah, it's only 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. It is not 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. It is 4 (laughs) a.m. After the show, you do your review of the show. Another three hours in the day, you're prepping for the show. If you are doing radio properly, um, you're reviewing the show and preparing for the show the following day, come back in the morning, 
to make sure that your notes from the last uh, from yesterday are still valid catch up on what is latest and bring that into the show that, that, that's not uh that's not a four hour show that's a 10 hour day and i have other things to do in this case i still want to do my photography so am i lying to myself by saying i'll take the show in the morning because i would love the paycheck at what cost which brings me back to it's allowed me to remember who i am Because life for me is not about the paycheck. It's about the stories that I am telling and the stories I'm involved in telling. It's about going in a path that I believe in and using that path to share the good things that other people are doing in the world and remind people through that that there is this powerful human being in you. It's just that the everyday rigors of life keep stifling that and that's what photography is to me at the moment using that power because it is a power to remind anyone that encounters my work of the everyday beauty that we keep missing the simple things look this is a flower look at this leaf look at the collection of leaves Look at how it's raining. Look at how the water is flowing. The simple thing. Look at this. The, the other day, I was making my tea. And because uh, my body is rebelling against me, sugar is now another thing that I need to stay away from. Because what is happening? Wheat, lactose, now sugar. Anyway. Um, and because of that, I've moved to honey. So I was making my tea in the morning and adding the honey. And I noticed little bubbles in, in, in the honey. I thought to myself, this, this looks, this is stunning, this is beautiful. And immortalizing that moment, taking that picture and reminding myself of the fact that there is beauty even in the most mundane of things and on a larger scale that there is beauty in me having this conversation with you here. Um, those little things are the things that I am focused on now. So who am I at the moment? At the moment, overall, yes, I, I made this distinction last year. I don't tell stories. I'm not very good at telling stories. I'm good at threading stories. I, 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 can't, I can't create out of nothing. I can, however, rearrange. And that's what makes, makes me good at my writing. I see things and make connections and thread them together. I don't invent the words, but I use them to thread a new fabric. Same with my photography. Am I the absolute best in the world? Far from it. I'm learning from the very best. And a lot of times I'm looking at the work, I'm like, ha, huh, how did you create this? What? When will I get to this level? But at the same time, remembering that as I work towards that level of technical proficiency, the thing that I am good at is threading a story in both word and picture. And I feel like that is a thing that at this present moment in time is what is holding me together. Because otherwise, I feel like I, I would have fallen apart a long time ago. A very long time ago. But because I remember, because I'm... Rem and because I'm surrounded by people that remind me of that. I have uh, wonderful friends that remind me of that. I have a wonderful partner that reminds me of that. I have a wonderful family, parents and brothers that constantly remind me that... As long as you're doing the best you can with what you have, you're an amazing human being, so keep at it. Then I have one more day in me. I have one more hour in me. I have one more minute in me. And who is me? A person who's good at threading stories. That is who I am.
and I have to remember who I am. Thanks for watching this episode. Remember, you can catch new Legally Clueless video episodes every Friday and new audio episodes every Monday.